My name is Dave. I'm an engineering director at Google in our SRE, Site Reliability Engineering Organization. Quick show of hands, who's heard of SRE? Oh, I love doing that. You know, two or three years ago, when I'd go to conferences and talk to people and say, who's heard of SRE? It would be crickets. Uh, and it's been slowly building over time, which is kind of neat. Uh, and so I get asked a lot, we all do get asked a lot, OK, so if SRE is how Google does production engineering at scale, and it is, how does that relate to DevOps? Because obviously, in the age of Twitter wars, they must fight with one another, right? And no, actually, they don't. They reinforce one another. In fact, uh, my colleagues, Liz Fong Jones, who I think I saw in front, there she is, uh, and Seth Vargo did an awesome series on YouTube comparing, contrasting, and talking about how they reinforce one another. Oh, I should mention, I have to go pretty quickly. I have like 108 slides to do in five minutes. No, actually, I don't have any, I don't have any slides at all because I'm an engineer, and I'm terrible at slides. <laughs> and I would strongly prefer you not spend the five minutes I'm on stage going, wow, he's really bad at slides. <laughs> and uh, you don't need slides for any of this stuff anyway. Um, so there's a great series on YouTube that Liz and Seth did that goes into a lot of details. But I, I, I want to cover a few important things here, because I think there's a key message for us to deliver. All right? Um, yes, it is true that both SRE and DevOps developed roughly independently, independently-ish of one another, kind of in the early to mid-2000s. One, you know, in the case of SRE, almost, you know, inside of Google um, in response to our production growth and challenges, and DevOps, of course, in a very open way uh, with a large community outside. But interestingly enough, they landed in, in roughly the same place, like a very common set of principles about breaking down silos and monitoring all the important things. Uh, and reasoning from your user's perspective first, and accepting that some failure is inevitable. Right? Those are basic principles of DevOps. So guess what? They're basic principles of SRE, too. So an easy way to think about this is that SRE is a very opinionated, because it's super opinionated, concrete implementation of DevOps principles. Right? And so when you're reading you know, the original SRE book, anyone here read the original SRE book? Awesome. I'm going to push my luck. Anyone even seen or aware that its companion volume, the Site Reliability Workbook, is out? Oh, woohoo! More hands. That's even, that's wow. It's kind of, it does my heart good. We only released it like last month. Um, so when you're reading those things, right, that's kind of the takeaway is, oh, I got it. This is a very specific roadmap that when I'm done, it's going to give me a thing that looks like a very definite kind of implementation of DevOps. Now, I want to talk about just a couple of key principles here that I think everyone should keep in their head. Number one. The most important feature of your system probably does not appear in your PRDs or your descriptions. It's your reliability. Reliability is the single most important feature of your system, period. And I can prove this pretty easily. If your system is not reliable, that is to say it does not consistently meet your users' expectations, it's not available when they need it to be, or it's giving them errors, or so forth, they will not trust it. If they do not trust it, they will not use it. If they do not use it, you will have a very expensive system with no users. Do you know what there is not in the whole wide world, in this wonderful, incredible world of nature where we have unbelievable diversity of everything? There is no such thing as a very valuable system with no users. It does not exist. There are, from time to time, very valuable systems that don't get much use. Nuclear control systems would be a good example. The airbags in your car would be a great example. By the way, if the airbags of your, in your car are getting consistently used, you should consider public transportation. <laughs> so reliability is the most important feature because it's the basis of user trust, which leads to the next thing, which is if that is true, and it is, then the only measure of reliability that matters is from your user's perspective. Your users will never call you and say, it's not working for me, and you say, but my monitoring looks good, and they say, oh, never mind. <laughs> that will never happen to you. The last thing I want to give you uh, to take away here in our last few seconds is give yourself a break. Many of us in our careers have labored under conditions that require us to be perfect. 100% customer satisfaction, 100% uptime, zero errors. These are bad goals. They're counterproductive goals and they will eventually turn your honest, wonderful employees into liars. Because when they reach the set of goals they can actually achieve, but you're measuring them beyond that, you'll force them to fudge metrics. Liz and I are going to have a talk later at uh, 11.30, I think, in the Murray Hill Ballroom, where we're going to go into a lot uh, more depth about this and actually how you can 
take these principles and really implement in your organization, and even if you're in a very large enterprise, that these are actually very friendly to the things you are doing now. But for now, I am Dave. It has been a joy to spend five minutes with you, and thank you very much. <laughs>